housing. The, probably the most fundamental of all requirements we have is that we have a shelter above our head. And everything which comes with it is like buying a house, renting a house, is related to a lot of stress because we have to pay for it. We have to pay quite a lot. Between 30 and 70% of our income goes directly to housing in, in Australia. So we were looking at the housing market overall and we're looking at where houses were yielding the most return. And that is a question of rent versus, versus what you pay for it. This is important for evaluators. If you want to buy a house, do you actually buy here or in another place? For people who are lending money, like banks, um, in which areas do we have a risk that people can't pay back? For investors, we wanted to look at which areas actually yield the highest return if you want to buy something and develop something. So location really matters. Up to now, this is always done in a very crude way, like average of house prices and rental yields in a postcode. Postcodes in Australia are consisting of thousands of houses, thousands of units, and they're all just averaged over each other. We went further, and if you are looking at one of these individual areas, we went into the detail of individual streets and individual property and individual lots. And we can see that some areas, like along certain roads, are having a better yield in blue than others which are in red. We did that for all of Melbourne. What we also can see there is that the yield per year, uh, per year varies between roughly 1% to 5%. That's five times more return. I want to first go into how it's normally done. Normally, you take the average median rent yield per year in an area and you divide it by the median price of a property. That means we just average everything. The rental market and the sold market are not the same. In some areas, there are more units which are rented and in some areas there are more houses which are rented. And by just comparing the two, we're comparing apples with oranges. It's like we try to do that in a cross-regression model. That sounds very difficult, but cross means for some things we have the price of the property, for other things we have the rent of the property. And then we compare it to a model of the price and a model for the rent. We use the model where we have lot size, bedrooms, bathroom, parking, road network centrality, as well as walkability, and control that for each quarter and postcode. That means for every quarter and postcode we have another model. First, we're going to go a step back. What we can see over the last six years is a, a slight increase until 2012, and then beginning of 2013 we have a steady decline of around half a percent overall in Melbourne. But if you're looking into the details, each area, each postcode is very different. Baldwin North around 2.5% over the last uh, average over the last five years, while Carlton is around 6-7% return on invest. That's a huge difference. That's much more important than the average that changes over time. The basis for this evaluation was like 250,000 um, sales and over half a million of rental uh, observations. If we split it the other way, we have nearly half a million of houses and 300 nearly a quarter of a million of uh, units observed. We can now split it into a different ways, like that we look at units and houses, or we look over time or suburbs. And this is very important because the whole thing changes in different areas, much more than it changes over time. What we also did was like looking at risk. So where uh, is the property market overheated? We have areas where we get less than 2% return. That means that's very risky. If you're lending money in this area, you want to have a better security. That means underwriting needs to be the house as well as some income. To sum it up, Melbourne has a large variety of rental yields and this depends on the geographic location.